Louise. I'm one of the nurses at Breast Cancer Now. I work on the um, helpline and our Ask Our Nurse service. Tonight, we're going to be joined by Hannah, who is um, a young woman who was recently diagnosed, well, last year was diagnosed with breast cancer. And um, I'm just gonna let her in now. So just waiting for Hannah now. Um, but we're gonna be talking about her experience of um, breast cancer and what it was like to go through breast cancer as a young woman. Here she is now. Hi, Hannah. Hi. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> so I was just explaining that we're obviously um, here to talk about your experience of breast cancer, um, yeah. which you went through last year and, and finished recently, sort of the beginning of this year, um, and, and what it was like to go through a diagnosis at the age of 25. Um, and obviously we'll be raising the issue of um, fertility as well and, uh, and, and the impact that breast cancer treatments can have on that. So really it's over to you and um, really if you could just sort of start by just giving us a sort of brief overview of, of your experience and the treatments and things that you, you've been through. Um, yeah, so I found a lump um, in January 2019 um, and initially I thought it was you know, nothing. Um, given my age and things like that. So I got my mum and my partner to have a check of it because at 25, I didn't really know what else to do. Uh, so they had a check of it. My mum was like, oh, I'm not sure. And so was my partner. So I went to the walk-in centre and they thought, oh, it's a cyst. You know, it's probably hormonal as well, given your age. Um, go to your regular GP in four weeks if it's still there. So it was still there. And I went to my GP and I got a referral um, through to our local breast cancer clinic. Um, yeah. And I had multiple tests and things like that. Um, and then in February 2019, I was diagnosed with grade three HER2 positive breast cancer. Okay. And for those listening, just explaining sort of that with the HER2 positive breast cancer, that's a, um, a protein that some breast cancers can express. And for people that do have HER2 positive breast cancer, that would then impact on certain treatments, i.e. sort of Herceptin or Pertuzumab yeah. that might be offered in your treatment. So, but anyway, yeah. you can go. <laughs> yeah. So I um, initially had to go through um, IVF, which I'm sure we'll talk about more um, soon. Um, and that was like a two week process um, where you had to take various injections and things like that to get your eggs ready for an egg collection. So that all went ahead and then I went through six rounds of chemotherapy and that was alongside um, two immunotherapy drugs called Herceptin and Pajeta or Trastuzumab and Pertuzumab. And by the time my surgery arrived, I'd had a pathological com complete response to the chemo. So it worked really well um my tumor was in fact um between seven and eight centimeters and um, by the time you know it, it had been thoroughly found for the mri and things like that um and then i went on to have a double mastectomy with reconstruction and um i finally finished off with just her septum injections after that and that they finished in march this year Brilliant. Okay. So yeah, huge amounts of treatment. Um, yes. And going back to the point about fertility, um, do you want to explain a bit about sort of when that was introduced at, at what stage and things like yeah. that? It may be different for different people. Yeah. So, I mean, given the fact that I was 25 and to be told that I had breast cancer, it was like a real kick in the teeth, to be honest. Um, I was in fact trying for a baby at the time and um, it was something that was on the radar for me um, and then when I sat down in the waiting room and they told me that I may be left infertile after the treatments that I was going to undergo it was like oh you know I'm 25 no one ever expects this kind of you know information and it was all just given at the first appointment because that's standard procedure that's standard practice like they tell you everything there and then um, yeah. So they did give me the choice. They said, we have got a bit of time. There's a bit of time in between um, that we can afford to let you have your eggs collected ready for the future, um, you know, in case you need them or anything like that. So it was a, it was a real experience, to say the least, to be honest. I think I was always the youngest person in the, uh, 
in the IVF clinic um, and I had many questions like, oh, you're quite young, why are you here? You know, and it was like, oh, probably not the same reason as you, but you know, I was diagnosed with breast cancer a couple of weeks ago. And that like led to a whole, you know, lot of questions that followed from that. Um, so from the IVF, uh, with the IVF, sorry, I had to have like multiple injections um, that I gave to myself for around two weeks. I would go for scans and things um, to check how well the follicles were developing. Yeah. And then after two weeks, I had to, you know, had a bit of like sedation. I was put to sleep and they collected um, my eggs for me and now they're in a freezer. <laughs> And that's it you've got them you've got them banked um yes but yeah and i think as well sort of when we had our conversations in the in the last few weeks you sort of were saying that it was brought up right from the very beginning and that's really sort of key i think um for lots of young women we do here on the helpline that's not always the experience for everyone so i think the key thing for sort of younger people going through that is if it isn't raised at that early point and i think it's really key and it may be that that you haven't even thought about a family okay. and it's really important that uh, well, it's, it, it, it would then bring that to the forefront and, and make you think about that on everything else you're going through from a breast cancer diagnosis. But I think yeah. regardless of where you're at in your stage of sort of whether you want family, whether you haven't even thought about it, really ask to go and see that facility specialist to, to have the conversation, I think, yeah. and know what your options are. And I think regarding my treatment as well, um, I was given the choice to put my ovaries to sleep um, as part of my treatment. So many people who have breast cancer and have other kinds of like hormone receptive, you know, breast cancer and things like that, they, they're given something called Solidex, which I'm sure you, you might want to talk a little yeah. bit more about. <laughs> yeah, so, so Solidex is, is, is a way that you can protect as well. It's another sort of insurance policy for your ovaries for ladies going through chemotherapy. Um, and, and it's a hormone therapy that sort of puts the ovaries to sleep a bit as a protective sort of function for, for um, chemotherapy. But as you rightly said, it, it, it's, it can, um, it, we've spoken before, haven't we, about sort of, of, of the side effects of Zolidex, and I'll let you explain a bit more about that. Yeah, so the uh, joyful implant injection of, of Zolidex uh, throws you straight into a medical menopause alongside like chemo um and the certain various chemos that can also kind of they work alongside each other to to put you into this lovely medical menopause uh so at 25 and i think probably in your 20s or being a young woman in general that to be put into a medical menopause is just it, it's surreal to be honest to have all of the the side effects that that come with the injection um which is given to you once a month as well whilst you whilst i was going through chemo it was given to me around seven or eight times um, and along with that comes with things like hot flashes and low mood and weight gain and confusion um, they were all really big things for me I would, I would find that I would be talking to someone and that was probably the chemo as well and, and I would just completely lose track of what I was saying yeah. um, and I think that's still something that I find now after having chemo and probably the Zolodex as well um, I, I still can lose my train of thought as I'm talking to someone and having a conversation and I go, oh, that's, you know, possibly the menopause, maybe chemo brain, I'm not too sure. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, I was going to say, it's probably a mixture of, of both, but not what you expect when you're in your sort of early 20s, really. No. Or something more sort of further on down the line and uh, as, as you get older, really. So that's really something to struggle with when you're yeah. going through everything that you are, are as well. And I did think, you get any help with the uh, menopausal symptoms? I did. Um, so I was given um, reflexology as part of my, um, as a complementary therapy to help with the symptoms, um, which I found was really beneficial. There was around six times where I was able to, to have the reflexology and, and that was quite like a natural kind of healing process, which I thought was quite nice because I think especially when you're going through cancer, you're having so many chemicals pumped into your body. And it's nice to just have something more on the natural side sometimes without thinking I'm putting this in my body and that. And, and I was offered other things as well, like acupuncture and things. But, um, and I was recommended to have um, sage oil as well, capsules, yeah. um, 
so I did I did take the capsules because that was recommended by the medical team um, but I never went ahead with the acupuncture because uh, coronavirus happened and, and I wasn't able to <laughs> get the benefits of that. And I think, again, it's really key that you point out that with the supplements, we hear from lots of people on the helpline that want to try different supplements yeah. and things like that. And, and they're not always rigorously tested as, as yes. sort of medicines and tablets. And the advice we would always say is go back to your team. Yeah. They're the best ones to advise on whether or not that will interact or whether it's safe to have. So... That's really key that you pointed that out as well. Yeah, definitely. I think everything, <laughs> everything uh, that I was, you know, and, and even paracetamol and things like that, I would double check with my team at the time that I was okay to take certain things. And because sometimes, especially if you're going through chemo, you can mask infections by taking paracetamols and things. And it was just like, you, just I think just ask if you're not sure. Just just phone and ask. Ask you know, and someone will always get back to you. Just don't do anything before finding out the answer. Yeah, no, <laughs> really key. And part of the menopausal symptoms that you had, Tana, did your period stop as well when you went through chemotherapy? They did. Yeah, um, they stopped for. It was nearly a year, and I remember going in for my surgery, and uh, one of the questions that one of the nurses asked me was when was your last period and my surgery was in August and I was like oh uh January and she was like why you know and I obviously then had to go into a bit more detail because I think she was fairly new to the role and I was like I've been, you know I've, I've had breast cancer I'm having a double mastectomy and, and my periods have stopped and it was like a real shock I think because of my age as well that obviously I'd not had a period for so long um yeah. So they, they did stop for quite a long time. Um, and I think probably something to, you know, bear in mind is after chemo, th they might not always be as regular as they were before and things like that. Um, and that's something that I've, I've found. Um, but I think it's different for everyone, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And again, we do, when you go and see sort of the fertility specialists, we, we often say sort of with, we do know that treatments for breast cancer can impact on fertility and your periods. And the sort of the nearer you are to menopause, the less likely the periods are to come back. But being 25, sort of under 35, yeah. the team would, would say sort of they expect, we, we, we can't say when, sometimes they can take a good couple of years to come back. Yeah. But the periods are more likely to return the further you are from your natural menopause. But yeah. chemotherapy can shift that forwards a bit. So you may go into a menopause slightly earlier than you would have naturally not having chemotherapy. Yeah. Um, but the key point, and I know we spoken about this on the phone a couple of times is is if you are um sort of um having regular periods and you stop having them through treatment that doesn't automatically mean you can't get pregnant yeah. so it's about speaking to your team about sort of what is the best contraception to use while you're going through treatment and often that's non-hormonal forms um yeah. if, particularly if your breast cancer is hormone a bit dependent yeah. sort of in the form of condoms or or a copper coil Mm -hmm. I think that's something that I was made quite aware of it was you know don't try for any children um for a certain length of time after finishing your treatment and I think everyone's everyone's cancer is different and I think that everyone will have different answers for that um for me it was I could start trying seven months post finishing her setting and um, as that was my safe kind of area and, and safe haven and um, to be able to try um so that that's still not not any time at the moment um but i think for a lot of people i think that the guidance is is you know it can be around two years for some people um but i think that's yeah. something that you know they would definitely need to check with their team because everyone's everyone's case is, is individual and everyone's different so i think that's something that they would need to ask their team beforehand yeah yeah and again from our conversations we had previously about sort of i think that's a lot we again with you on the on the helpline is is sort of when is is the safe time yeah and and as you rightly said the guide that this sort of well, there isn't any sort of set guidance um yeah. there is a trial going on um throughout europe looking at that but that's for estrogen receptor positive um breast cancer and again sort of for ladies who will have sort of tamoxifen or hormone therapies that the accepted time for some ladies is two years but very much that's independent and individual and we would very much push you back to your team to get advice on, yeah. on when is the right time for you to um to try yeah definitely yeah. Yeah, yeah i would tell that i would say that to anybody i think everyone's case is different and everyone has res responds differently to treatment and you know things like that so i think just just always ask your team <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. And and obviously, I mean, it's it's only sort of early days because you finished your sort of your last perception, didn't you, in, in March? And in then March, yeah. Hit, hit with coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, I feel like so, I was lucky to be able to finish it in March, to be honest, um, just with everything that's gone on. Um, it was nice to be able to complete the, the course, but it's, you know... <laughs> It's not been it's not been an easy ride, I think, for any cancer patient whilst they've had to battle through coronavirus at the same time. Um, so my thoughts are with everyone that, that's going through any kind of cancer treatment at the moment. Yeah. And, and what would you say sort of just sort of going on your experience, Hannah, sort of for anyone who sort of maybe just sort of recently diagnosed, um, who's a younger woman, who's who's sort of thinking about sort of fertility issues and things like that or fertility preservation yeah. any tips or advice that helped you go through your experience of breast cancer um i think don't don't lose hope um because i think the initial diagnosis is it's it's not great for anyone i think it doesn't matter what age you are um i think when you whether you're young older it doesn't matter i think to, to be told you've got cancer it, it's not it's it's not easy for anyone to hear those words. I think in terms of fertility, I think don't give up hope because initially in my mindset was like, I won't be able to have children. And then that was it. But there are obviously other options out there um, to kind of, to, to, to prevent that, you know, from happening. So, you know, ask about Zolodex if you're able to have it. Ask about, you know, other ways of kind of, you know, ask about IVF, you know, if, you, if you're yeah. young. I think just ask the question if you're considering a family or even if you're not you know the the option is definitely there for you and, and hopefully it will be provided um for you if 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 needed I think I would never have thought of asking I didn't really know that many people at the time that had been diagnosed with breast cancer at a young age so I feel really fortunate that my team were able to kind of put that forward and, and put that out there for me straight away um so I feel very lucky in a way that I was I was given that um and yeah, if you are recently diagnosed and you've not started chemotherapy or anything like that, and you are just, you know, waiting for, for your slot and, and before you sign your consent, just go ahead and ask, just say, okay, well, I'm only young and, and I, I might want a family in the future and, and I'd like to, you know, to, to, to store my eggs or my embryos. Um, so definitely asking. And I think in terms of just anyone that's diagnosed with breast cancer in general um, at a young age, the, there's always someone that that will listen to you um whether that be your friends family medical team breast cancer now that, that you know there's people who will always be either at the other end of the phone obviously given the circumstances that we're going through at the moment or you know people just people to talk to even socially connect with people um i find that's you know really useful um to talk to people who are a similar age so just yeah. you know just just if you're feeling rubbish let people know if you're feeling good let people know I think that's something that you know I struggled with initially I was quite you know embarrassed about how people would react to my diagnosis but people listen because you know it's it, it's it's a really tough subject but I think people want you to to, to you know do as best as you possibly can through it so that they will help yeah thank you so much Hannah I think we're coming to the end now we're just yeah to the end of our time which has gone way too quick than it would. <laughs> um and it's um so lovely to talk to you and i'm sure um we're going to have loads of questions and if there's an opportunity and you want to come back and talk to us again in the future yeah. that would also be brilliant um, would, yeah. just to say this video will be um uploaded onto facebook so that can be viewed and the links to younger women fertility sort of zolodex or menopausal symptoms all the things we've discussed this evening will be on that sort of um that link on the facebook live so you can access that if there's any questions anyone has from tonight and they want to contact us on the helpline as hannah said somebody to talk to the helpline will be open tomorrow and we can be contacted on 0808 800 6000 and um yeah website and the forums which we didn't speak about we spoke about yesterday didn't we and they are very useful they're extremely useful especially if you're going through treatment or if you've got any questions to ask breast cancer now forums are amazing um to give you any answers and as i say just to socially connect with other people who 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 get it to be honest yeah. 
And, and two big shout outs for two of our services, actually, before we quickly go, is our Someone Like Me service, which is a peer support service, which we have lots of younger women. Yeah. And our younger women together, which although because of coronavirus is not currently running face-to-face -face services, we've got lots of written uh, information and support. So thank you so much, Anna. And, no problem. Uh, and have a good evening. And thank you. We'll see you all soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.